All right, guys, you asked for it. Now it's here. You want to know what I'm talking about? Hit the subscribe to find out or the like button, whichever one's easier. What's up, Cyber Dragon fans, and welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, I, I can't tell you how much time I put into this deck. I literally just released a video of what I believed was the best Cyber Dragon ABC uh, Shadal scrap build in the world. And now here I am, like spending the next four days thinking about what can I, <laughs> what more can I do? I just love this deck so much, and I just love to see how far I could really push it. And today, I've I've done it. I've done it. I've done 10 test hands, and in each test hand, you are guaranteed a boss monster. Seven of the 10 uh, test hands, you are guaranteed both boss monsters. Uh, seven? No. Eight of the, uh, of the 10, both boss monsters. Seven of the 10 three boss monsters and then uh so on and so forth so it's absolutely insane the deck is consistent it just takes a little bit of brain power but what deck doesn't if you love the deck so much you're gonna sit there and grind until you can't grind any more so without further ado uh, further ado today i have smashed together five different archetypes into one deck you might as, this deck shouldn't even be called the cyber dragon abc shadal whatever deck this deck should just basically be called a machine deck with shadal support without wasting any more time let's jump right into it guys hit the like button for uh for a good old um joey wheeler mr joey wheeler has brought us all the luck in the world like the video to like him or like the video to dislike him whichever one suits your fancy all righty guys let's jump right into it first off two cyber dragons um i've you know, not a lot to say i would run three but three uh, tend to get bricky especially with the amount of level fives that you already run in the deck so two is perfectly fine you need no less than two because machine two uh, Cyber Dragon Core, three of Heart and Soul of the deck searches out your Cyber Spell and Trap cards. This is also one of your Machine Dupe targets, as well as three Hertz, your other Machine Dupe target, which also recycles your Cyber Dragons from either Grave or gets you uh, a Cyber Dra OG Cyber Dragon from the deck. And then the third Machine Dupe target, which is two Nashters. Um, two is just enough. The, the game is insanely fast, so I, I don't think you realistically need uh three i think a lot of builds are only playing two and some builds that play three prefer to run it at two so um that's just kind of like my my theory about it but nashers is a great way of kind of rebuilding or recovering or continue to build your board um it's also a great way to kind of end uh end your turn to uh to finish setting up your board uh to either otk or to continue setting up uh a board for your uh, or against your opponent Two honorary Cyber Dragons, Galaxy Soldiers. Everybody knows him. He searches himself out, and he's an instant uh, infinity. Um, two of each of the ABC pieces. Uh, this is, you know, when you're playing ABCs, I, I believe you can't run no less than two. If you only run one of each, then you're kind of risking it really hard. Um, two gold and silver gadget. They're great levels, uh, level for extend, uh, extender plays, um, allows you to really push the deck, um, to further grounds as well as helps you play around a lot of potential negates. Um, and it also provides kind of like a backup plan. Like this deck has so many backup plans. Like there's a, you get, you guys hear a plan A, plan B, plan C. This deck has like a plan C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. <laughs> And uh, for uh, the next setup here, we have two guitar, one mic. Uh, guitar, you pitch a card from your hand to uh, special summon the mic straight from the deck. Um, he gets you an extra normal summon. He's also a level five machine, so he's also like a support in terms of getting into your Nova Infinity. He also enables uh, backup plays. Um, so like if your, your initial route of going through just, uh, Cyber Dragon or ABC kind of collapses, it enables you to go into your backup plays such as Shadal and Scrap to be able to still, uh, produce the board. Uh, one Scrap Recycler 
and one Shadal Beast. Uh, the Shadal and Scrap Recyclers are only support. Uh, originally, I thought you would realistically. You, originally, I thought you would kind of need two Scrap Recycler uh, deck test uh, play testing because I've been play testing with Scrap Recycler a little bit longer than I've been play testing with the Symphonics. Um, so like I think one is perfectly fine. Symphonics I used to play a long, 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 long time ago when some sorcerers were still around, and they were so great. Uh, the Symphonics produced the ability of going into like uh, binary sorcerers, Nightmare Griffin, ABC, and Infinity, while still having like three cards in hand. So, uh, so the Symphonics was it was a mechanic that fell out of the deck, and came, uh, slowly making its way back. Uh, so that's it for the monsters. I know it's a butt ton of monsters, but I mean, what deck is it play with a butt ton of monsters? Um, On to the spells. Four Union Hangers. Three Union Hangers, one Terraforming. Not not too much to say about it. When you're playing ABC, you play the Union Hangers. Two, Shadal Fusion. You want to see it, but you don't want to see it too much. It's always a great turn to uh, card. Always great to draw into. Uh, ideally, when you draw this card in your starting hand, you're always going to want to go turn two that's probably the most ideal direction logically it's the most ideal direction to go um and provides great extender plays as well as helps you turbo into your abcs or turbo into your cyber dragon stuff as well to repair plant um you do need a lot of searching it's, uh, especially if you got to go into your backup uh backup plants in case your first two plans <laughs> fail repair plant is definitely one of those cards that uh that helps you get back into the game after like 10 negates um, i'm kind of exaggerating the 10 negates but after after a couple of halts cyber repair plant will definitely help you get back into the game especially since the majority of the deck is light machine uh three machine dupe self-explanatory you're playing cyber dragons you so if you're playing cyber dragons you're playing three machine dupes no less than one Cyberload Fusion, one Emergency, one Pot of Avarice. Uh, one Emergency because I only have one. Pray to the Yu-Gi-Oh gods that I pull one in the dual overload sets. Pray. <laughs> um one cyber load fusion uh i'm not a huge fan of having too many fusion uh fusion summoning base uh spell cards just because if you have too many you can you, you have the likelihood of drawing too many in your starting hand which can potentially become dead cards just because you kind of need more monsters and you do these uh those fusion cards um this card is also searchable through not not just core but as well as the one overflow um if you pop it whether if you're using scrap wyvern or if your opponent pops it or if you have twin switch or whatever the case may be uh it's a one-way ticket to it uh, it's always a great kind of board ender and it i've got it's got me thinking about an alternative play with it uh, but i don't want to peek too much about that not until at least i kind of think more on it and see how it really uh responds but that is it for the main deck on to the extra deck uh one seeger one scrap wyvern one platinum gadget one cleave for genius one Amblo Whale, and then one Borolode Dragon. This is the Link lineup. I, it's been a long time. I've always played a machine-focused deck, so Boral, it's been a long time since Boral has been in this deck. Um, with this current build, it's actually you're actually able to go into your Link Force so much easier, and depending on the circumstance, you can always switch up your plays. So these are one of your two other boss monsters that you'll go into, and it, you can always switch up your plays on your opponent. So your opponent will never realistically know what direction you're going to want to go depending on what your opponent's realistically playing um for those of you guys you, everybody know knows what borlo uh what borlo does i uh, don't have borrow sword i i am the kind of player that you play with what you got and this is what i got so um if you have borrow sword properly play borrow sword <laughs> Uh, for those of you guys not know what Swarmship Ember Will does, he's a Link for a uh, machine. He just takes two or more effect monsters. If he's on the field, he gains 200 attack for each Link monster in both players' graveyard. He has a base of 2600, so you can only imagine how strong he can actually get. Um, if he is destroyed, you can target one Link 3 or lower monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. Um, if, if a Link 3 or lower monster is destroyed while this card's in the graveyard, you can banish this card from the graveyard and pop a card your opponent controls. Uh, I think it's pop a card. Yeah, destroy one card on the field. Um, and it's not even your opponent control. So you can, you can easily just use this effect to pop an overflow uh, and then kind of go into insane plays from there. Uh, Cleave Fort. Cleave Fort has been there for me through thick and thin, especially through the Masterpiece era True Draco. I've always loved this card. Unfortunately, this card may be seeing its way out once Union Carrier comes out just because uh, Cyber Dragons, uh, at least this build, when you have five different archetypes, you're absolutely insanely tight in extra deck space. So 
Um, but for those of you guys that don't know what Khalif Fort does, he basically negates uh, effects of face-up cards on the field. So always a great out. Uh, Platinum Gadget, uh, self-explanatory. He gets you an extra level 4 or lower, I believe. Yeah, level 4 lower machine body from your hand on, out on the field. Scrap Wyvern, self-explanatory. And then Seeger, self-explanatory. Um, the Exceeds, one Gigant, one Time Thief Redoer, one Nova, one Infinity. The game is so fast-paced that it's uh, that I find it more resourceful playing one and one, especially since I have a Nashter to be able to play. Um, it's really easy to recur to these cards uh, like it's nothing. Um, and like I said, especially coming in April and MR5, I guess we're going to just call it MR5. I'm not a fan of calling it MR5, but everybody else is calling it MR5. So um, especially coming in MR5, the game's going to be so fast-paced. It's You, you don't want to play too kind of safe, I guess you want to say, with your extra deck. You kind of need to kind of be risky, especially, like I said, when you're especially when you're smashing together five different archetypes, not a lot of wiggle room. Uh, Time Thief Redoer, because it's always nice to be able to steal away uh, from one of your opponent, like taking away a potential viable resource. Um, this He also clears himself out on the field uh, during your turn, um, so that way you can go into more extend, uh, extending plays, uh, and then comes right back during the end phase. So, uh, Gear Gigant, which he is probably like one of the MVP cards when it comes to backup plans. Uh, ideally, I find myself going into Gear Gigant when I when I want to rely on a alternative route to protect some key players uh, from like negation or exposure or anything like that. So, but Gear Gigant basically searches out almost anything in the deck that's a level four or lower. Um, usually, you'd either search out Scrap uh, Recycler or Symphonic, um, or if need be, you can also search out Nash or anything like that. So that's it for the Exceeds. Onto the Fusions. Two ABC Dragon Busters. You're playing ABC, uh, so you need to be playing two. One Mega Fleet. Rest in peace in MR5. Um, one Rampage Dragon, and then Shadal Construct. Uh, these should all just be self-explanatory. So, uh, but that's just about it. Uh, that is the deck. If uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do a quick shuffle. You do need to be very, very thorough with your shuffling. Um, because if you if you kind of lazily shuffle, you do dig into your uh, key pieces a lot when you're comboing. So if you do lazily shuffle, a lot of your key pieces kind of stay together, and you end up kind of seeing them on the next hand. So that's that two of ten. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, you there, there's so many different ways you can go about this deck. So it's not like you can't produce anything with a brick hand. You can always you can absolutely produce something with a brick hand. Um, it just requires some brain power. So I'm hoping that I don't get embarrassed um, in showing you guys. We'll probably do, uh, I want to do a second turn because it's a lot more viable that way, but uh, we'll probably stick to a uh, first turn hand combo just so you guys can kind of see the thought process on how everything kind of rolls uh, rolls out. So here we are. I, what, what are we, if we were going turn two, what would it be? So good thing we're not going to uh, turn two. <laughs> but also it's not too bad either because you can still search out Symphonic, uh, symphonic Mics. Mics? Guitar. You can search out Guitar and then be able to pension them something. So it's not all bad. Uh, so turn one, Terraforming. Search out the normal uh, the normal ABC stuff. So Union Hanger. Activate Union Hanger. We're going to activate in front so we can still keep it in frame. You're going to search out A. Okay. Wonderful. Bam. Now you have two directions that you can go. You can either go straight into your Cyber Dragon plays or um, you can protect your Cyber Dragon plays and utilize your uh, your level four machines to go into extenders. In this case, we all know the Cyber Dragon play. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my extenders. We're gonna normal summon uh, Silver Gadget and we're gonna special summon uh, ASL Core. Then Union Hanger's effect uh, kicks off. By the way, just in case you guys were wondering, this is all under the assumption of MR5. Uh, just because there's no point in building a deck for the current uh, master rules because the current master rules is about to fade out anyways. So, nothing to worry about there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and overlay um, our two level four machines triggering B's effect to search out another card. We're going to go ahead and search out C. We're going to detach uh, from Gigant. We're going to search out our good friend, Symphonic Guitar. 
Now, um, again, it always comes down to the whole two directions that you can go. Um, in this case, uh, we're probably going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to activate guitar. Doesn't matter which side. I guess it just depends on if you want to respect the uh, the potential impermanence, depending on how they kind of set up their board or how they could potentially set it up on the next turn. But I guess this is first turn, so there's nothing realistically to worry about. Um, symphonic guitar. Um, big debate. I kind of want to discard uh, Naster just because I know I'll be able to go into Platinum Gadget. I can just summon uh, C that way. Um, so we'll discard the Naster. To, uh, to use Guitar's effect to get Mike's out onto the field. So if Mike's on the field, I am now granted an extra normal summon because that's his monster effect. I forgot to mention that as well. And his uh, pendulum effect, uh, I think it's along the lines of like, if there's not another symphonic uh, in the other scale, then his scale is four. But if there's another symphonic in the scale, then his scale is one, so. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, he gives you an extra normal summon, so you can normal summon the core. Core will then search out uh, whatever cyber spell that you want to search out. I guess everything's circumstantial at this point. Uh, you can search out your repair plant. You can search out um, your emergency. I think in this case, we'll probably uh, we'll probably just kind of stick to repair plant, uh, just to have that backup play. Um, you know, maybe go into uh, into something to be able to recover uh, from any negates or whatever the case may be. Uh, machine dupe, machine dupe special summons two cyber dragons one and two and three and four five six seven eight. And actually, I think we might just use that repair plan. Just depends on what we uh, what we kind of want to do from here, right? Um, always respect the Nibiru. This is definitely far past the fifth summon, um, but hey, better late than never, right? Uh, but as you can see, you can always absolutely get the Nova, um, Nova and Infinity b uh, before the fifth summon. But um, in this case, I just wanted to showcase a different angle that you can go about it. Alrighty. Um, in this sense, we have Nasher in the grave. I think we're set up for a pretty decent play here. Um, we just kind of want to just want to think about what direction you want to go, right? Um, I think in this case, we'll go with uh, Platinum Gadget, so we'll link these two away. And we'll get Platinum Gadget out. Platinum Gadget's a fit, uh, let me sit here and ponder. Yeah, we'll activate Platinum Gadget's effect. Special Summon, uh, Sea Crush Wyvern. Um, in this case, we can now activate the Repair Plant. Only have two Cyber Dragons, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we'll just do the search. Now, the reason why I want to activate Cyber Repair Plant is to get another B to the hand. Uh, just so that way I can kind of continue pushing for link plays at this point before I go into uh, machine only mode over here. We'll link these two off. Wherever shall it be for the Seeger. Now, at this point, this is where it kind of becomes circumstantial because a lot of people are like, oh, the new Mecha Phantom Beast Link 3 monster is ne definitely not necessary. In this case, a special summon uh, B off of C's effect, you can definitely go into a Link 3 play, uh, but you can also just kind of leave it be and go into your Link 4 play, which would be the Amblo Whale, because at this point, you would detach from Nova to special summon the Nashter. Then Nash's effect would special summon the other Cyber Dragon. And now you're kind of locked into machines. So from this point, I would send one, two, and three. Link those three away for an Amblo Whale. And I guess at this point, it's safe to uh, have your Infinity out onto the board. Uh, but don't forget to trigger B's effect. B uh, gets you an extra search. So we'll search out the other one of the other pieces. I usually have a habit of searching out another C. Uh, but it's entirely up to you guys. And then we go ahead and banish our ABC pieces. For Epka. And there you have it. So now um, we have second chance opportunity. We have an interruption, we have disruption, and we have second chance opportunity. In the event that that blows up, we get the special summon a level four uh, gadget monster. Obviously, it's a level four, but basically, special summon a gadget monster. So you'd be able to special summon um, any gold gadget, silver gadget, whichever direction you want to go. We also have one card in hand to be able to discard off of ABC Dragon Bust. <laughs> Pardon me. 
ABC Dragon Buster, if this blows up, um, I get to special summon a Seeger back out onto the field. So, I mean, you, there's always, there's all these different directions that you can absolutely go. So this kind of board will definitely keep you standing in the game. This is basically like my rushed thought process. I was kind of thinking and going all at the same time. Usually when I do these combo videos, I practice one hand or two hands, um, see which one's most, uh, most ideal in terms of like showing off what the deck can really do at its full potential, completely uninterrupted. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to show you guys, um, the, I guess the consistency as well as the thought process that I kind of go through, uh, when making, uh, when making these kinds of boards. And as you saw that I had two different, completely different and separate directions to go that would still kind of end on this board nonetheless. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let me know in the comment section below. What do you guys think of the deck? This is absolutely insane. Uh, five archetypes into one. I've definitely pushed the bounds on this one. Uh, a long, long, long time ago when Nightmare Mermaid was legal and so was Rusty, I was able to smash together four different archetypes, which is Cyber Dragon ABC, uh, Orcus, Phantom Knights, which was also, also an extremely fun and amazing deck. Uh, super sad that they started banning all of those key players. Um um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, oh, one more thing. I've also been keeping an eye on the face on the Facebook post forum thing, and I've seen I've seen a couple of times what people think that the next Cyber Dragon uh, support should be. I think I think the next type of Cyber Dragon card that we should have give it be it maybe could be a level three or whatever the case may be. I think it's an, a Cyber Dragon card that allows us to do something while it's in the grave so like an orcus type of deal so yeah we have core but core has the stipulation of if you're if you control the monsters and your opponents do you can banish it in special summon and it's a this or that effect you can only use one or the other so if you've normal summoned it and then like do it whatever and then they somehow cleared your board during your turn you can't use core's effect until your next turn which is super bummer uh, but I think having another Cyber Dragon that says like, hey, if this card is in the field, you can banish this uh, Cyber Dragon special summon two Cyber Dragons or a Cyber Dragon or a Machine Monster or whatever the case would be from the deck or Grave or whatever the case may be. Uh, because I, this uh, this deck has started slowly leaning towards uh, dumping stuff into the Grave. So in my head, it would only make sense that um, they give us a type of utility in the grave besides of uh besides all of the other stuff that we currently have but yeah um that's just about it that's all i have for you guys let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the deck what you guys think we can do to improve the deck and what you guys think we can live without um the purpose of this deck is to basically provide so many different utilities that no matter how many negates um your opponent kind of set up you'll still be able to kind of find your way around to build or put a boss monster at least two boss monsters on the board in this case we're able to put three so i consider it a big boy win um and yeah if you guys want more videos like these consider hitting the subscribe button as well as hitting the like button i know i've said that like multiple times but it's like one of the key ways to support the channel especially for growing YouTube, uh, youtuber channels um show a little love show a little show a little fun show a little participation and uh, you get more stuff like this anyways uh, i love you all you all are amazing you all are great you guys have a wonderful evening take care Bye bye